Reverend Sean they were calling that Transformation Church. 1032 South Indiana, where Pastor Andrew D. Hunt Jr. is our leader. Look, don't touch that dial, Channel 36 Can TV. You can you stream with that Transformation Church. You can YouTube with that Transformations. Don't touch that dial. Enjoy the service already in progress. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.
for Sister Latoya Brown.
truly our God is an awesome God. I have given the great pleasure of introducing my friends. I have known Elder Renee Holloway for several years. She is an awesome woman. She does a great job serving our God. She is a woman who the wife, mother, grandmother, and now great grandmother. I praise God for her life and the lineage that she had. She has served working for the city. She has been a member of her church for several years. But the most important thing that I know about Elder Renee Holloway is she don't play when it comes to God. She's been serious about God since she was a child. She made up her mind that she wanted to serve God and live for him and him alone. And if you know her personally, she makes no bones about who she served and who you ought to serve. She has always been a woman of her word, a woman of integrity. She's always been a woman who says what she means and means exactly what she said. And the only thing I can really say about her, and even if we say everything else that she has done, all the accolades she has done, that she truly is a woman of God. God bless you. shall we 
say then, shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. And how can we live in it any longer? Or do you know that all of us who are baptized in Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know that our old self was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin may be done away with, that we no longer be slaves to sin because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. That's good, that's good. And then turn over to Philippians chapter 2. Let me just go and read one verse. Verse 9, therefore, God elevated him to a place of highest honor and gave him the name above all names, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus is Lord to the glory of God. Amen? Amen. Amen. We see Well, I heard a new word. 
the gospel of Jesus Christ. It gave me a new song that the angels couldn't sing. I've been washed in the blood of the crucified one. I've been redeemed. I looked at my hands and my hands looked new. And I looked at my feet and they did too. And I was told that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things have passed away and behold, all things are become new. But one year later, one month later, sometimes even one week later, the old person looked like they came back and evicted the new one. I still lied. I was still a fornicator. I still cussed. I'm going to give my testimony. I still took what didn't belong to me. I was still dishonest. I still hate it. I still backbite it. I still gossip. There's nobody here. I still was mean. No doubt. I still didn't tie. I still did things my way. I still disrespected the leadership. I still just didn't do what God told me to do. So was I new. Nicodemus was a religious man. He was a Pharisee. He knew all the laws. But he had questions too. How can a man be born again when he is old? Can you enter a second time into your mother's womb and be born? And Jesus said, surely, surely, I say unto you, you must be born of the water and of the spirit, or you cannot even see the kingdom of God. So how do I spring into this newness of life and Jesus Christ? It has got to be more than what I feel, and it is. It must be about a relationship that I know. And so Paul made the statement in Philippians that I may know him in the power of his resurrection. Paul said that the power of the resurrection enabled him to press toward the mark of a high calling in Jesus Christ. The resurrection power does not merely give us a jump start for discipleship by freeing us from sin and making it possible for us to resist our sinful lifestyles and our sinful desires but it also gives us power and guides our growth so that we may become just like Christ. The power of Christ's resurrection not only breaks the bondage that we had in our rebellious life, but it instructs us in a Christ-like way of living. This is not head knowledge. This is not fictitious. This is not artificial, but I need to know him, and I need to know him beyond my mind. I need to know him in my heart, and I need to know him in the eternal, infinite way of my soul. I need to know him in his power and in his resurrection. I need to know that the only way I know him is to die. When I received the gospel of Jesus Christ, I changed my position. I am no longer me or mine, but I belong to him. And since I belong to him, I am joined to the family of God. Engrafted in the family of Abraham, transitioned from death into a living creature and saved from a burning hell. I am now part of a royal priesthood and a chosen generation called out of darkness into his marvelous light. The seed of his word was planted in me and it became life and it was buried in me and then I was buried in Christ in baptism. As the seed of the gospel germinates, in my daily prayer and Bible study, it changes my attitude and the way I think about things. And I no longer think dead thoughts, but the thoughts of my mind are continually being washed by the word of God and replaced by prayer. That it is no longer I, but Christ in me that lives.
resurrection power. See, we're not in the church today living in resurrection power. We gave the preacher our hand and we were supposed to give God our hearts. But we took back our hand and in our hearts followed it. And so instead of living a victorious life, we're living a defeated life because we're not living in the resurrected life that we've been called to live. This resurrection power gives a distinctive shape to our Christian life. This power calls us to take our present bodies seriously, to take our resurrection bodies seriously, and to take the body of Christ seriously. It is no accident that God's power to give us life spiritually is channeled through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our act of faith in baptism becomes a sign of our participation in that resurrection. It becomes a symbol of our Christianity. The resurrection of Christ was not resuscitation. It was not revivification, and it was not reanimation. It gives us life because he has life. God did not bring Jesus back to more of the same life. Elijah went back to more of the same life when he revived the widow's son, the Azarephath. Lazarus went back to the same life when he was brought back from the grave. But the life that Christ gives us is not the same life that we had. But he gives us a what? New life. That life reflects the ultimate purpose of God for us in creation. That he will redeem man through the life of Christ. Amen? First, we believe in the resurrection of the flesh. It is that we claim that rising from the dead, Christ's resurrection has already occurred, and one day we are also going to be resurrected. That's our hope in our Christianity. It is our future that is final. It is not an existence in some unbodied state where we just float around, but we are actually told that he will give us a new body after resurrection. So it means that this body is a point of reference right now when we are saved. So our redeemed life starts right now. See, a lot of people just wait till they get to heaven. But the word of God says our redemption starts right now with the same body that we're walking in. Amen? It becomes one of the platforms for our ministry in the community of Christ. In the communities, we care about one another's physical needs because we care about the body. And we share our professions to those who are in need. And so we take care of the old, and we take care of the young, and we take care of the poor, and we take care of those in need in their physical bodies because of the res resurrection of Christ. Everything we do in ministry is tied to the resurrection of Christ. So what we do with our bodies is important. That's why the, body, the, body, the word of God said, don't mark up your bodies. Take care of your bodies so you can do ministry. Amen. You want to spring? You can't spring if you can't walk. You can't spring if you're sick all the time. That is not a decree from God. So we got to take care of our physical bodies so that we can take care of the ministry of, res of resurrection. Then we need to take care of the body of Christ. Amen? This causes the 
disciples to provide long-term care to human needs. We care about everybody. And it also involves working to correct broken things in our society, such as sexual deviations and poverty and unjustness and unhealthiness. All of those things concern us because they concern Amen? We use preaching. We use the arts. We use counseling to encourage one another and build up the body. Resurrection. Building up the physical body. Then building up the body of Christ. We care for one another in the church. If I hurt, you hurt, right? If I'm in pain, but if I'm happy, because we all part of the Bible says there are many members, but one, and we all have a ministry to do. Amen. The head can't do what the foot has to do. Amen. Everybody has a part, and when we all work together and do our part. Then the body looks good. Amen? Amen. Jesus has everything the Father has to give. And then he gives us all that he has. And only through the church and worship can we inhabit and walk in our true identity together as members and be the type of, uh, of members of the body who can commit to Christ. Amen? Amen. Because of the resurrection, I am what I am. The same spirit that raised Christ now raises me to a new me. He gives me a Christ-like shape in my life. That is, he informs me about my feelings and my thoughts and my actions, not only between him, but between you and me. He allows me to know that everything I now do, I do it because I have been raised to walk in the newness of life. And although God's grace has come into the world to bring reconciliation and justice, I understand that there are spiritual powers at work opposing the life-giving power of God's grace. And Paul personifies these evil forces with names like sin, and flesh and death in this world. And so we got to make a choice whether through our actions we identify in our everyday life to be partners with God through the resurrection of Christ or to be partners with Satan and his evil forces. Paul said it like this, the things that I would do, I don't do. But the things that I don't want to do, I find myself doing. Now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God. 
And the old man will take territory that he don't even belong to. 
be good. Walk. Walk. Don't stammer. Don't stutter. Don't stumble. But walk in the newness that God has created you to walk in. God bless you on the Oh, yeah. 